well hello YouTube and it's Zoe reporting from the Globe Artichoke and uh, it's allotment vlog number six and well here I am in my Globe Artichoke I've done a lovely little intro which I hope to be able to cut together because I'm still learning all of this uh, YouTube cutting together and stuff as well as trying to learn the allotment it's a very big learning year for me so here you can see I've some beautiful artichokes coming on here and um, so let's have a quick talk about the weather we've had. We've had a wonderful, I'm going to do another little tour at the end of this and then after that we're going to dig up our garlic and have a look what's happening with that. But at the this week we started off um, the weekend and the beginning of the week with wonderful sunshine and then we have had here in Kent in the UK we've had torrential rain, we had flooding where I live. It's um, just like goes down the hill and floods the whole centre of town but the plants are loving it so I am not complaining and now it's quite humid and it's sort of muggy and humid and cloudy but and the lovely thing is though there's absolutely nobody else up here on the allotment so it's just me and my other half just checking stuff out taking photographs digging stuff up I had uh, Monday was brilliant. I got a couple more car rabbit and we got some peas. We got enough peas to have uh, a little help in each to try, and they were so nice. They were so sweet. And um, the peas I've got are not really great, and I really am going to have to do some studying on peas to learn out which ones I want to grow. I want something that climbs high and is going to produce quite a lot because my family really like peas. They seem to be getting quite a lot of pods but not enough to make a major meal and I don't seem to be growing enough. I thought like 40 plants would be enough. Obviously with peas it's not, especially if it looks like the ones I've got are a bush pea. So I think I made an executive decision and I'm looking now. So anyone watching this, if you've got any suggestions, which is a good one that I might be able to get away with growing now to put in and maybe get harvest sort of coming into autumn time, that would be really good. That's a bit rebellious to uh, do because I don't think you're supposed to really start peas now but there must be one out there that I can start especially with the British weather that I can get away with and I think you can do them going into winter so I'll probably definitely do some winter peas but I'm going to have to have a serious think about whether I'm going to membrane stuff for the winter and try and kill off some of this vine weed because it's definitely driving me mad so now what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about today my um, little my global artichoke because this was on my plot when I came and I thought I had no idea what it was I have never had an artichoke I've never eaten an artichoke I thought about 20 had just appeared on this when we came it was completely and utterly it just was worse for wear it looked trodden on and dead and I was thinking oh do I save it I didn't really know and I just cut the whole thing back um, artichoke's perennial so it comes back year after year it's taken over root system it's even rooted itself a little baby which you should be able to see in the intro and it's um so that's got like a little baby one coming off it and it attracts some it seems to be attracting the black fly but i um sprayed it with some garlic spray and it doesn't seem to have anything on it now even after all the rain but there's still a few ants wandering around so it wouldn't surprise me if we don't farm them back up onto it but garlic spray seemed to work a treat so that's definitely worth trying so I really don't know a lot about it I'm dying to try it it's a very good probiotic so it's very good fermenting food apparently as I've been reading up on it and the globe artichoke is a I can't stop fiddling with it so my husband says it's the majestic plant of the uh, of the allotment but um, it's from the thistle family, so it's the same like if you take milk, milk thistle, you know, you've got a hangover or to help clean your liver, if you've got liver problems, it does exactly the same thing. And it's meant to be really good for like storing, making, fermenting, and I don't really know, but it is really nutritious. Once again, it's one of those plants, a bit like asparagus, it's really good for clearing out, cleansing you. So I'm definitely going to try it. And just hit the heart. I've literally got like about 20 just appeared on here and when I cut it right back I thought oh I don't know what I'm doing I didn't know if it was I had one come up on it in the winter and then that the wind killed it and it died so I was just like I don't really know but I have to say I'm just blessed it's an absolutely beautiful plant and I can't wait to try them 
it's really high in vitamin K, vitamin C, vitamin B6. It's got all the photonutrients in it. Like I said, it's a brilliant probiotic. So it's definitely something that's worth giving a go. And of course, once it's one of those plants, I'm so blessed. I wouldn't have known where to start with it. But once it's um, once it's established, it just keeps coming back year after year after year, giving you back. And this one, I just can't believe how wonderful this is. So absolutely blessed. If you have any, you know, if anybody watching has any stories or recipes, I would love a couple of recipes on how I'm going to cook this. It looks like I'm going to be doing a lot of studying and working out when this is ready to be harvested. I know they're not quite ready yet. I think they, this one up here, I don't know if you can see it, it's absolutely beautiful. So I'll be trying out and working that out. I think I'm probably going to store it. Like you get them in the shops, you get the artichoke hearts because it's only the heart of the artichoke you eat. So we'll see. So I'll see you on the other side where I'm going to give her have a little tour and we'll see how much stuff's growing up. The corn's looking amazing, wait till you see that. And the potatoes, good old potatoes. You know, we love growing a bit of potatoes. And the squashes, they're going crazy. Probably could have used the whole bay for them really. But I'm planning on putting something else on the other side. So I'm going to put something that they can just climb all over making it up so yep yeah, see you on the other side we're going to do a little tour and then stick with us to the end because we're going to have a look at this garlic and see if this garlic worked and actually okay quick tour in the rain of the thing and i'm starting off with the potatoes who have got flowers on them so hopefully we'll be able to get those up soon once the flowers have died and everything is loving this rain after the heat it's amazing how much you recognize the different weathers and how much they affect you when you're growing stuff but my other tomatoes my little babies but everything survived we didn't get too many winds here so this is good it's a bit rainy now my lettuce is still growing really well but this side there's something wrong with this bay because nothing seems to be very happy in there I'm just going to leave it and see I think maybe the bag or maybe it's not deep enough something but as soon as I finish growing my lettuce I'm digging it all out and I'm gonna change the soil over on it here's one that I've got netted with all kinds of stuff in it I think half of its weeds I'm not even sure anymore I'm gonna have to as soon as we've got a sunny day I'm gonna sort that out and through back here last week I got well this week actually Monday I've had two more kohlrabi you can see through two more kohlrabi from there which makes me very happy my squash plants are doing amazing look at these and loving it these are the spaghetti squash i'm going to build something in here for them just to either climb along the floor or go wild and at the back there i've got the turk something turk it's called and a pumpkin and then over here the runner beans are starting to climb up as you can see with this rain the weeds are going crazy i won an award for the best weed grower definitely and this is the bonbon squash my favorite we have they're perking back up the courgettes which got affected by the last storm so they're looking good and look at that corn and over here oh gonna get muddy got the cucumber which is looking fantastic it just only went in like beginning of the week and it survived so far that's wonderful nice and muddy run looks at the tomatoes garlic is coming out today so I'll do a little video at the end of us digging that up because it's going all brown and it's falling off and it's got the rust and apparently the rust is fine but it just looks horrible and it's going all it's all flopping in the rain and I need the bay so it's coming up the asparagus is just doing its thing which just gets left alone it's cool go around the back here this is one bit I always forget to look at the state of that this is what happens when you don't do your plot look at that this is like got i think the plot the plot manager cleared this a month ago 
and the people still just have, can't be bothered to come back and do anything and it's all blowing over onto my side so cheers for that whoever you are there's my sunflowers who are finally picking up i did a little flower patch and my plan was that because we're on the side of the greenhouse here i think you can see that as it gets hotter in the summer that these will grow up and shade give it a little bit of shade just to help because i've got my peppers in there which we're going to go in and see in a minute and i've got hollyhocks so it all seems to be doing okay didn't do anything for ages but now i think i might have a nice little flower bed coming up there which makes me really happy another look at the uh and we've got one over the back that nobody's doing anything to they both have owners but they can't be bothered this is my velotti beans for my arch training up the arch and they're coming up now wow that one's coming really high and over the other side we'll meet in the middle got a dahlia in a tub just finally decided to poke up and here in the greenhouse i've got look at these peppers pinched those in about three weeks ago and they've just got so bushy I think I'm going to have to put them on the floor maybe repot them because I didn't think I was going to need to put these in grow bags well they seem quite happy so maybe leave them in their pots and I've got the bell peppers down here which are doing really well got a little pepper in there coming up another one there and these are like a sweet red just there great and then i've got a aubergine that i brought in it was two pound 49 in home bargains i mean how could i say no how could i leave it there which i brought four now and a couple more tomatoes this so i can see some weeds just so i can see what happens when um, I've strung them up, just to see the difference of growing outside and growing inside, really for an experiment for myself, just on my learning curve of how stuff is. Wow, look at that. It's looking beautiful. I don't think they've got any peppers on them yet, but they've been leaving the door open because to encourage the bees to come in. And everything seems to just be perfect in here. The stuff that we've kept in here is really happy. I'm really happy with those. We come out. Oh, some onions. These are banana shallots. They're all still a bit since I put them in. They're still leaning. So I don't really know anything about them. Another pot owner gave those to me and said just stick them in. So I did. So there we go. And we come around here. That's my cabbages growing in there. On the other side. And I've got some broccoli coming up on the end of the kohlrabi and this is the gem the glass gem corn on the other side and these are the new beans that i put in and they're coming up really well there's a few have been munched on but i've just left them i just thought i'm just going to give up and not care and let them do their own thing and they seem to be really happy in there there we go over a couple of strawberries i sent put in Dahlia needs to go in a bigger pot. Chives, fruit trees. It's like a messy patch. Oh dear, look at this. This is all going to seed. Strawberry patch. Wow, look at the weeds just from a couple of nights of rain. And this is my little flower bed here, which is all starting to pop up okay. Hope to get some flowers soon. Coming up, got a couple of sweet williams, and this is the other courgettes. And I put two seeds in the spot on the one that died, just to, like they said, like a, it said in a book I was reading. You're going to take out the weaker one and leave the stronger one. And they've just come up; they've literally come up in a week. So I don't know why I panic so much. It's a big lesson, like just chuck them in the ground if you haven't got it done. You've still got time. Little herb patch. And my herbs are coming up, little flowers along there, and apple tree, apple tree, plum tree, doing really well, plums are coming through, look at these apples, so excited, and 
go back round. Got a raspberry that needs tying up. Some red currants. Black currants, in fact. Got some gooseberries over the back. And this is my daughter's little flower bay that she went to grow. And look how well she's doing. Everything she seems to touch turns to... I don't even know what this is. We threw this in a pot. It came in with the bee house. And it didn't grow at all. And then it had two little sprouts. And I, we chucked it in here to see if it would grow. And it's doing amazing. So, yeah, her sunflowers. She just threw the seeds in. <laughs> all of them. All of my anxiety and my daughter just chucks stuff in. Six year old chucks stuff in a bay and has loads of success. There you go, that's what it's all about. I've got purple carrots coming up, orange carrots, which I've only just put in, and these are parsnips. And this is my stepson's bay, and his carrots are coming up lovely that he's put in. And I put him on the end, it got dug up by a fox, I don't know if you can see it in there very well, but I put, when I thinned mine out, the bit, the area that got dug up, and this is why we've netted this, it's his bait every time. Nothing else gets touched. So I put him in the ones I thinned out, just as an experiment to see what happened, and they're coming up, these, they're brilliant. And his corn, and his little sunflower patch, so that's really good, and that's just done all the way round. And there you go. In the rain, on Friday the, what day is it? I think it's the 17th of June, from the heat wave, my little patch, all ready to go. And there is the globe artichoke that we were talking about. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye. Right, hello again quickly a little bonus at the end of my video today guys as I said we're going to dig up the um, the garlic and I'm going to introduce you to my wonderful husband Dave so hi Dave hi. And so <laughs> here it is and we're going to dig it up next Uh, there's a lot of garlic. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get a bucket and give them a wash off. 